Hey there! Today we're going to have a look at what I think is a very, very, very fascinating pen. The Namiki Emperor. And um, the Emperor is a special pen. There are all kinds of versions of the Emperor. Fantastic, beautiful, wonderful Marquier versions, which are, well, they range from extremely expensive to unaffordable. Uh, this is the Vermilion Urushi lacquer version, and that itself is an expensive pen, but I think it's very, very fascinating and very worth it. I ran into this pen at a pen show, as these things go, at the table of Sarge, as these things go, and uh, I fell in love with it, and Aziz Azad. Here's a present. And there's the pen. Now, what's so interesting about the Emperor? The interesting thing about the Emperor is that it's a very Freudian model, uh, because this is uh, by no means a small pen. Uh, I just happen to have this lying around uh, also to review. This is a, a Wing Sung pen, and I think this is a very... Uh, it's the what model, because otherwise, if I don't say this, people are going to ask me. It's the 698. Uh, I think this is a pretty normally sized pen, and then this is the Emperor. So, you, you, you see the issue here, the Emperor is enormous. It is, and, and that's just all there's to it. I'm going to cover the past of the pen, I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample. Starting at the very top of the pen, make sure I have a very good grip on this because it's a lot of pen. Uh, the cap, nothing on the finial. We have the, uh, the clip. The clip, I don't know if you can read it, but it says Namiki, and it has the uh, Namiki logo. It is a pretty tight cl uh, clip, but it has that little ball, which should make it easy to put it in a pocket, and that works well. That snap makes me a little nervous, so I don't typically do that. Large cap. I, I mean, there are pens. Let me unscrew that for one second. Here you have a, a Caveco Sport uh, that basically fit into this cap. All right, so just to, to emphasize the, the size of the pen once again. Barrel, large, long barrel, nicely shaped, and nothing at the bottom except for the Urushi lacquer, uh, which I think is very nice. As you can see, highly, highly reflective, very shiny, and it's very nice. One of the interesting things about this type of lacquer is that it will patina. So if you were ever to see a Vermilion Emperor in a shop, it's not going to look like this. It's usually brighter. And it slowly, it doesn't, it, I, it dulls, that sounds kind of negative, but it changes. It, it, it changes, it patinas, and I think that's a very interesting aspect of these types of pens. Okay, now we have a giant section and an enormous nib. This is the old style nib, it's, uh, they call it number 50 nib. Uh, I would say this is about a number 8 nib, and if I show you that in comparison to a number 5 nib on that same, um, uh, wing sung pen, just aligning them, uh, then you, you see the, the difference. The nib is enormous. What exactly is on the nib? On the nib it says 18 carat gold Namiki broad uh, registered patent office and then 50 because as I said Namiki calls is a number 50 nib in their internal nib numbering system. Uh, a giant feed too in the same color as the pen, which I think is very nice. A big section that tapers down and then flares out, and these threads, which are absolutely not sharp. Very, very pleasant. The nib was abroad. Some previous owner stubbed it, turned it into a stub, did a nice job. It's ever so slightly oblique, so it's a very fascinating nib to use. And did I mention that the pen is huge? Uh, definitely large, and for the lovers of posting, it is possible. I don't know why you would want to do it, but you can do it. Filling system. Eyedropper with a one-way shut-off valve. You see that on more Japanese pens, and it works quite simply. Right now there's ink in the pen, so I'm not going to take off the section. Why would I not do that? Because the capacity is 4 milliliters of ink. Uh, think of the standard converter, which is about 0.9 milliliters of ink, so 4 milliliters of ink is a lot. Unscrew the section, take it off, eyedropper, ink up to there, 
put the section back in, and then you write with it. Now, the wetter you want it, the more you open the valve. There's a little rod in there with a stopper that kind of fits into the end of the section, and that regulates ink flow. You want a wetter pen, then you just open that valve, and the more you open it, the wetter the pen becomes. Simple system, very elegant. Uh, of course, a traditional eyedropper is even more simple, because it has no extra piston in there, has no uh, uh, valve to shut things off. But you can't really regulate the wetness of the pen with that, and you can do that with this pen, so it's, I find it interesting. What do I like about the pen, what do I not like about the pen? I love the size. I like larger pens, and I think this is pretty much as large as they get without becoming absurd and unusable. Because the strange thing is, even though it's huge, it's very comfortable. I find it very comfortable. Of course it's large, but it's still a very pen-shaped pen. There are some Indian eyedroppers, for example, which are extremely bulbous, and I don't really like that. To me, that doesn't really look like a pen anymore. It gets some adult shape. Um, I think this is a lot more interesting because it is, it is an actual pen shape. The nib is enormous and it writes flawlessly. I honestly have not had a single skip, I haven't had any issues with this. It starts up all the time, every time. Wonderful, wonderful nib. So Namiki really did a great job in tuning this. Urushi lacquer is not for everyone. Uh, it didn't really used to be something for me until I really started to look at it up close and there definitely is a very interesting mastery in using this technique well. It looks simple, it's not simple. Look up the process of harvesting the urushi and using it. Uh, there's also, I once heard that you can only actually apply urushi specific times of the year in Japan because the humidity in the air has to be right. If it's off then it won't work, etc. So you can see how elaborate this is. I love the filling system. It's simple, it's elegant, it works. Uh, I like my pens a bit on the wet side, so you just open that valve and that's all there's to it. What do I not like about it? Well, um, this is not a cheap pen. This is uh, well well into four figures, uh, so price is probably going to be prohibitive for some people, but I do think you get a lot in return. Um, final thing is, and this is nitpicking, but although I like the filling system, one issue is if you do like a wetter pen, you have to open that valve, and I just think it's not the prettiest, like this. Whereas if it's closed, you barely even see the line between the, uh, the turning knob and the barrel because of the lacquer. So this looks beautiful and I'm not too sure about this. But hey, that's inherent uh, in the pen and there's nothing you can do about that. Having said that, I think it's fantastic. Obviously, a very, very magnificent gift for which I'm very deeply grateful, and I think the best uh, indication of that is that since I got this in September, it has not been uninked. And that's not because it's not run out of ink, because it's in the almost capacity, but it's definitely been dry, and it's inked up straight away, and right away, immediately inked up again. There you have it, beautiful ebonite pen, um, Urushi lacquer over the body, I think it's fantastic, and I absolutely love it. Dimensions of the pen, as well as high-resolution pictures, will be on the website, sbrebrown.com. Uh, we're going to see how it writes. That's coming up right now. I hope this was useful so far, and I'll very gladly see you later. Bye-bye. Okay. The Namiki Emperor. I am going to open that valve a little bit. That's how I usually write with this one. The Namiki Emperor, uh, the Vermilion, and uh, this is the broad nib stubbed by someone, nobody knows who exactly. The ink is uh, Yarda Lead Claret, and I, I do find that a very pretty uh, ink. Also seems to work well with the uh, color of the pen. The writing is definitely smooth. It's uh, I had to get used a little bit to this nib because, as I said, it has a very slight italic shape, so I think you need to rotate it a little bit into the paper as you write for optimal performance. 
But once you've found that sweet spot, you get a very nice bit of line variation in a very natural way. Fast writing. I, uh, I think this pen has not been used for a week. Uh, I uncap it and it, it performs straight away. So that's a very good sign. Wetness. No complaints there. Line variation as the nib has been stubbed. You do get some natural line variation, but if you really want to, there is definitely some springiness to that nib. So that's very nice. Reverse writing, well, an italic style nib, you end up with another italic. So I don't think that makes a lot of sense, but as you can see, you can get away with it if you absolutely have to for reasons that are beyond me. Okay, there you have it, the Namiki Emperor. I know this was a uh, highly anticipated review, so I hope this was useful, interesting and entertaining. I'll uh, gladly see you later. And that's it. Bye!